More bars, more data, faster speeds. Our desire for all things digital has cellular providers scrambling. And the antennas needed for all of that can emit radiation hot enough to cook human tissue. But no one's warning us about the invisible danger. Just look at the signs posted on the poles. It's the reason concerned parents contacted 10 News. They read, caution, radio frequency fields near some antennas may exceed FCC rules for human exposure. A Team 10 consumer alert tonight. The more we rely on smartphones, the more data we want and the more antennas we need. But at what cost? Workers say they're getting injured working on those antennas and the constant push for more towers is putting them at risk. So yeah, I think we have an interesting one today. Um, might have to make a, a couple people upset because <laughs> contrary to the popular belief, not everything Trump touches turns to gold, nor is it gold, right? So we have here from Breitbart, Donald Trump calls for American dominance in 5G wireless technology. President Donald Trump utilized Twitter on Thursday to urge American companies to move forward in the race for 5G. And this is uh, this was on February 21st. And he says, I want 5G and even 6G technology in the United States as soon as possible. Uh, it is far more powerful, faster, and smarter than the current standard. American companies must step up their efforts or get left behind. And this is what's going to be rolling out to the United States. I've covered 5G before on my channel. Uh, it, initially, I think Sacramento is going to be one of the initial staging grounds for 5G. Silicon Valley, really, you know, California. But from from the East Coast to the West Coast, this stuff is we're going to be saturated in this radiation, right? And what kinds of radiation? Well, let's just find out because 5G, it's a it's a package deal. Uh, 5G is part of the LTE, the Long Term Evolutionary Network towards the new radio. It's just just the latest iteration of that. This is a uh, cursory stuff I'm showing you. You know, I'm not going to be digging through, you know, obscure internet depths or anything. I'm going to let NWO Google dig its own grave, right? So what kind of radiation comes from Wi-Fi? Radio frequency radiation, which includes radio waves and microwaves, is at the low energy end of the electromagnetic spectrum. And we'll get into that. Uh, it is a type of non-ionizing radiation, right? So that's Wi-Fi. That's what comes from the routers in your home. That's what gives your laptops and your computers um, their functionality, right? At least in terms of, you know, hopping on the Internet and checking out me on YouTube. Uh, now, what kind of radiation comes from cell phones? Well, cell phones emit radio frequency radiation as well, a form of non-ionizing radiation from their antennas. Parts of the body nearest to the antenna can absorb this energy. And this is from, you know, cancer.gov. Uh, I'll leave links in the description below. The other one here was from cancer.org. So, you know, it's crazy. I, all I did was type this in, and the first thing that comes up are these answers uh, dealing with cancer. So just the health implications of 5G alone isn't looking good. But let's go ahead and check out the CDC to find out oh, what the heck uh, non-ionizing radiation is. So here we are. What is non-ionizing radiation? Uh, well, it exists all around us from many sources. Uh, it is to the left of the ionizing radiation on the electromagnetic spectrum in the figure below. So this is that figure there. Here we have radio waves, microwaves, um, all down here on the non-ionizing radi radiation spectrum. So how is non-ionizing radiation different from ionizing radiation? Put simply, and this is in terms of CDC, the non-ionizing radiation differs from the ionizing radiation in the way it acts on materials like air, water, and living tissue. Unlike x-rays and other forms of ionizing radiation, non-ionizing radiation does not have enough energy to remove electrons from atoms and molecules. Okay, non-ionizing radiation can heat substances. For example, the microwave radiation inside a microwave oven heats water and food rapidly. So these are microwaves, um, these radio waves, and specifically with 5G, they're millimeter waves. And again, just looking at some of the health implications alone, when you are essentially going from this, right, you're going, this is the traditional stuff, and sure, look at all the wires, it's ugly, hey, I get it, um, I don't like wires on my desk, I know, but when you're going from this to this, you are now, and, and again, 5G is just piggybacking off of a lot of um, the 4G mechanisms, but you are now saturating, okay, the population in this low level energy this non-ionizing radiation which if you look at it's places like for you know the bio initiative group and they've done that they did this study it was updated in 2017 uh, they talk about 
evidence for the inadequacy of, of standards. They say that some of the standards that they use for the um, electromagnetic frequencies and some of the harms that it can cause to us, that the standards they use to, to determine the, the harm to us are inadequate. It's outlined in this small section of the Telecommunications Act, based on science from 1996. To turn your phone on or off. Back when this was the height of technology. Okay, it poses questions. And they also talk about, you know, uh, fetal and neonatal effects uh, of EMF. And we'll just go to the uh, introduction of that right here, you know, fetal and neonatal effects of EMF. Because when we, it's like a multifaceted assault when it comes to our children. You know, when, when they're in school, they have to deal with indoctrination. You know, when they're in the womb, if they can survive it with the increase of abortion, now they're at risk uh, in the womb uh, from from other methods as well. So just looking at the introduction of this, uh, it already doesn't look good. You can just imagine what the rest of this will be like. I'll leave a link in the description for you to check it out on your own time. Um, but getting into it here, the exposure of the developing fetus and of children to electromagnetic fields, including both radio frequency radiation used in new wireless technologies and to extremely low frequencies or power frequency fields, has raised public health concerns because of the possible effects, cancer, neurological effects, uh, developmental disability effects, etc., from the long-term exposure to low-intensity environmental level fields in daily life. So what are they talking about there? They're talking about, oh, I don't know. Uh, cell phones and Wi-Fi daily stuff that we use every day and they're looking at the implications and they're saying some of the standards that we use to judge how harmful this stuff in uh, how harmful this stuff is is inadequate if that's not enough evidence for you to at least be concerned and look into this I don't know what would be I know scientifically that putting up these cell phones cell phone towers is safe but the International Association of Firefighters disagrees. They began opposing cell towers on fire stations after firefighters complained of health problems. These firefighters developed symptoms. Dr. Gunnar Heuser conducted a pilot study on firefighters at a station with cell towers. And the symptoms included problems with memory, problems with intermittent confusion, problems with weakness. Heuser says their brain scans suggest even low-level RF can cause cell damage and he worries about more vulnerable groups like kids. So we found abnormal brain function in all of the firefighters we examined. So, following lobbying by firefighters, Cork and his co-author exempted fire stations from their bill, making them one place cell companies couldn't put a tower. The firefighter and cancer survivor Tony Stefani notes, It's not only firefighters, it's the people that live in the general vicinity, vicinity of these towers. Current regulations don't take into account continuous low-level exposure from these small cells 24 hours a day. And you know also while we're at it, why don't we ask where 5G could potentially take AI? Does it increase its capabilities? Can it expand what it can do at all? And we're not talking about, you know, just self-adjusting algorithms or pre-programmed responses. We're not talking about gimmicks like Siri, Alexa, and Cortana. We're talking about machine learning, deep AI, okay? We're talking about real stuff here. Uh, what does Trump know that we don't? Is there some nefarious underpinnings going on with 5G, expanding the network, not just for telecommunication and, you know, broadcasting bandwidth, but something else? Else, right because <laughs> within the same month I think it was the same three weeks right that other story was the 21st of February this is the 11th Trump wants the US to lead in artificial intelligence the US is one of the countries that immediately come to mind when thinking of leaders in the field of artificial intelligence and uh, this is what happens here <laughs> Trump he wants 5g right uh, and he wants AI I think the two go hand in hand I think there's something going on there Anyway, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and get into the AI aspect after this. Take care of yourselves out there.